the standout moments yeah. of being still alive after 17 years of this this era and I came to the 1970 era so I mean it's incredible look at the sunshine 50,000 people a day it couldn't be better really after all this time people still want to come if you book the right bands create the right event it's phenomenal it makes me feel proud I mean when you see 50,000 people in a field going wild to Liam Gallagher it sends a shiver up your spine because you book him when you're sitting in this wet and windy office in Fulham in late November and you think, blimey, will anybody come? And then it, they appear. It's incredible. First time I came was in 1970 when I was 17. And I remember we were standing on the car ferry, there were like three and a half thousand people. And we got a bus to Newport and then we had to walk the rest of the way. And we came over the top of the hill and it was like the Battle of the Somme. I'd never, I never realized there were 600,000 other people who were like Jimi Hendrix, The Doors, ELP, the Moody Blues, and you could talk to you know anybody sitting next to you because you had a shared experience in music. And I thought, this is what we should do for a living. But I never thought this time later I would come here and restart the festival because the Isle of Wight Council um, asked everybody in the music business to tender for it and nobody was interested because they thought, why would anybody go to a festival on an island? And literally, I came down for a laugh, really. I thought I came in 1970, I'd come and have a look. But I was sitting on the ferry, the sun was glinting off the Solent, and I thought, well, everybody else has got one, why don't I have a festival? But with all due respect to Cleethorpes or Hull, I wouldn't have attempted to start a festival there. The Isle of Wight Festival is an iconic brand. It was the Woodstock of Europe. Uh, it's more sophisticated, the loos are better. It, you know, you have to realise that the audience pay me to come and I pay the artist to come. So the audience are more important than the artists. If you don't look after them, they don't want to come back. So you have to provide better facilities for them all round. They're not just going to live on hot dogs and hamburgers for four days. They like, you know, fine dining, decent cuisine, everything that goes with it. I think the whole thing is upgraded. We now spend a million pounds on security and policemen purely to keep people safe. Uh, the Rolling Stones was quite classic because I booked them after we'd sold out. So when they turned up, Mick said, can we go on early? I said, why do you want to go on early? He said, well, everybody might want to leave because you booked us after <laughs> you'd sold out. I said, but you're the Rolling Stones. <laughs> anyway, they stayed and it was incredible. And I got Amy Winehouse to sing with him. And um, I remember when Jay-Z was on stage, I thought an audience couldn't go more wild. And then Kanye West walked on and it, it was extraordinary that the way people erupted. You see all those people go up and down. I thought the earth was shaking. And it helped that Beyonce was standing on my left as well. That was good. And just tell me, um, obviously being the 50th year this year, what sort of special things are you doing to celebrate, to commemorate that? Ah, that's what we're not going to tell you. <laughs> Otherwise, it wouldn't be a surprise, would it? But everybody has got to wear gold on Saturday for the gold anniversary. I haven't chosen my outfit yet, but we're getting there. So there are a few surprises, obviously. There's a couple of things, not musical, just entertainment-wise. Nice. We've got Kasabian, The Killers, Depeche Mode doing their only UK appearance, who I think are going to be the dark horse of the event, actually, because they are a stadium act in Europe, and they really know how to perform, and they have more hits than you realise. I think Liam Gallagher singing the Oasis songs, but then you look lower down the bill, you see Niall Rogers, Van Morrison, Sheryl Crow, and lots of up and coming talent. You've got Judas, Bang Bang Romeo. There's lots for everyone. You know, we book music from past, present and future. It's a combination. Are you gonna have time to enjoy the festival yourself? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I get to see bits and pieces. You can't see a whole show by someone, but you get the vibe from people. And people come up to me and thank me, which is really nice.